The V-1 flying bomb was an early cruise missile in World War II. The V-1 was the first of the vengeance weapons deployed for the terror bombing of London. It was developed at Piedmont Army Research Center in 1939 by the German Air Force at the beginning of the Second World War, and during initial development was known by the codename, Cherry Stone. Due to its limited range, the thousands of V-1 missiles launched into England were fired from launch facilities along the French and Dutch coasts. The German Army first launched the V-1s against London on 13 June in 1944, one week after the successful Allied landings in France. At peak, more than 100 V-1s a day were fired at southeast England, 9,521 in total, decreasing in number as sites were overrun until October 1944, when the last V-1 site in range of Britain was overrun by Allied forces. After this, the Germans directed V-1s at the port of Antwerp and at other targets in Belgium, launching a further 2,448 V-1s. As part of operations against the V-1, the British operated an arrangement of air defenses, including anti-aircraft guns, barrage balloons, and fighter aircraft, to intercept the bombs before they reached their targets, while the launch sites and underground storage depots became targets for Allied attacks including strategic bombing. The four German launch battalions could only operate from the Pas de Calais area, amounting to only 72 launchers. They had been supplied with missiles, catapults, fuel, and other associated equipment since D-Day. None of the nine missiles launched on the 12th reached England, while only four did so on the 13th. The next attempt to start the attack occurred on the night of 16th of June, when 144 missiles reached England, of which 73 struck London, while 53 struck Portsmouth and Southampton. Damage was widespread and General Eisenhower ordered attacks on the V-1 sites as a priority. Operation Cobra forced a retreat from the French launch sites in August, with the last battalion leaving on August 29. The attack stopped only a month before the war in Europe ended, when the last launch site in the Low Countries was overrun on 29 March 1945. Most operational V-1s were launched from static sites on land, but from July 1944 to January 1945, the Luftwaffe launched approximately 1,176 from modified Heinkel He-111 aircraft of the Luftwaffe's third bomber wing, flying over the North Sea. Apart from the obvious motive of permitting the bombardment campaign to continue after static ground sites on the French coast were lost, air launching gave the German Air Force the opportunity to outflank the increasingly effective ground and air defenses put up by the British against the missile. To minimize the associated risks, primarily radar detection, the air crews developed a tactic called low-high-low. -low. This meant that the He-111s would, upon leaving their airbases and crossing the coast, descend to an exceptionally low altitude. When the launch point was neared, the bombers would swiftly ascend, fire their V-1s, and then rapidly descend again to the previous wave top level for the return flight. Research after the war estimated a 40% failure rate of air-launched V-1s, and the He-111s used in this role were vulnerable to night fighter attack, as the launch lit up the area around the aircraft for several seconds. The combat potential of air-launched V-1s dwindled during 1944 at about the same rate as that of the ground-launched missiles, as the British gradually took the measure of the weapon and developed increasingly effective defense tactics. In total, 10,492 V-1s were launched against Britain, with a nominal aiming point of Tower Bridge. 4,261 V-1s had been destroyed by fighters, anti-aircraft fire, and barrage balloons. Approximately 2,400 V-1s landed within Greater London, inflicting 6,000 fatalities and 18,000 serious injuries. The last enemy action of any kind on British soil occurred on March 29, 1945, when a V-1 struck Datchworth in Hertfordshire. Late in the war there were plans to use the Arado AR-234 jet bomber C version to launch V-1s either by towing them aloft or by launching them from a piggyback position atop the aircraft. In the latter configuration, a pilot-controlled, hydraulically operated dorsal trapeze mechanism would elevate the missile on the trapeze's launch cradle about 2.4 meters clear of the 234's upper fuselage. 
This was necessary to avoid damaging the mothercraft's fuselage and tail surfaces when the pulse jet ignited, as well as to ensure a clean airflow for the Argus motor's intake. The Arado AR-234 is a jet-powered bomber designed and produced by the German aircraft manufacturer Arado. It was the world's first operational turbojet-powered bomber, seeing service during the final years of the Second World War. The AR-234C version was equipped with four lighter BMW jet engines. An improved cockpit, with a slightly bulged outline in the upper contour, and integrating a swept-back fairing for the periscope, and a simplified window design with 13 glazed panels reduced to 8. The BMW jet engines improved top speed by about 20% over the original series airframes. During October of 1944, the prototype AR-234C performed its first flight. Although an operational test squadron was being prepared, only 14 C-Series airframes were completed by the end of the war, with fewer than half having engines. Some were found at the end of the war sitting in the open, complete but for empty engine nacelles. Flight testing of the new subtype hadn't started yet when Germany surrendered. No V-1 missiles were ever launched from the C-version of the Arado 234 jet bomber. I hope you enjoyed this episode and to make sure you don't miss my future work, please make sure you are subscribed to my channel and press the bell notification button. Thank you and see you in the next video.